Stop trying to play your guitar solos using scales. Have you gotten advice like this? Have you seen advice like this or watched videos uh, where someone is teaching a lesson on advice like this? Have you even tried to use the tips and the techniques they teach in these videos only to come up empty-handed and not really feeling like you've actually improved your improvisational skills? Well, that's because this advice is terrible. 100%. This is not good advice, and it is not going to help you actually improve. What's up, everyone? My name is Matthew Dale. I am here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more, and I'm going to do a little bit of myth-busting in this video today. So just to be clear on what I'm talking about, this is typically how a lesson like this goes. And just for the record, nothing annoys me more than hearing advice like this. Um, We are musicians. Yes, we are guitar players, but more importantly, we are musicians. And telling a musician to forget about the music, to play better music, is just awful advice. Let's just be honest and clear about that here in a second. Um, Now, however, most of the time what these videos are talking about isn't the actual scale itself. It's a scale shape. And we're going to make this difference here. We're going to separate these into two different categories in this video. But here's what the advice looks like, okay? You feel stuck playing in the pentatonic box like this. Playing the same licks. You know, stuff that might look like that, which also still sounds good, right? Uh, But you feel trapped and uh, you're feeling um, dry and you're not feeling um, creative anymore. You just feel restricted by this box. So then the lesson is stop trying to use this scale, which really is a scale shape, to play your guitar solos. You should use this thing. Right, so effectively what I'm doing, I'm still using the same scale. Let's be honest here. I'm not playing anything different than A minor pentatonic right now. But what I'm doing is I'm shifting my focus on where I'm putting my fingers. So even though this... And then I have a couple notes either side to extend this scale a little bit further. But see, the problem with this is, and this is one of the reasons why this is really, really, really bad advice, it's nothing different. You're not actually learning anything new, you're just learning a trick to fool you into thinking that you are learning more of the fretboard. But the same processes are at work here. Usually the process is, here's my root note, this A note on the E string, and I'm going to play this scale shape for my solo ingredients. I feel locked in. This guy is showing me this thing. Now all of a sudden I feel freed up. wow, that must be amazing, right? I must be really improving. Until you reach the point of diminishing returns and realize you just subbed one scale shape out for the next. Okay, there is no musicality actually being taken place here unless you are fully aware of what you're doing, which is playing an A minor pentatonic starting on the seventh degree G, G, root note A, minor third C, and then the fourth note D, fifth note E, minor seven. Now we repeat minor seven, root three, flat three, four, five, flat seven, root, flat three, four, five, and I can keep going, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, up on fret 24. If you are fully aware of of the notes that you are playing and the intervals that you are playing, then one, you're probably beyond this lesson, and this lesson wouldn't make any sense to you. Now, if your goal is to be fully aware of those notes and those intervals that you are playing, which is going to make you a better improviser, this is a really bad exercise to do because it's not focusing on the actual notes that you're playing. So here's what I'm going to do in this episode. I am going to give you three truths that will actually help you to improve, 
and I'm going to give you three exercises and things to implement in your practice that will actually help you to improve your soloing and to have a much better command of the fretboard. And that's the most common thing that I hear uh, in the lesson room, especially when I get like an intermediate player in the lesson room. Uh, they always say, I want to be able to solo all over the neck. And really what they mean is they want the freedom of pure musical expression no matter where they are. I find it ironic that typically the process we have as guitar players is I want to break out of this scale shape. I guess I better learn more scale shapes. No, you're just going to be stuck in every single one of those scale shapes. If you know all five of the pentatonic shapes, um, you probably feel stuck in all five of those pentatonic shapes. Learning all of the shapes doesn't actually lend itself to musical expression. What does lend itself to musical expression is knowing the music. And a really great tool that can help you understand the music is my Essential Music Theory Cheat Sheet. This is available for free on my website. I will link to it in the description box below. You can also find it at matthewdale.com theory. This is an amazing guide. It's got all of our major scales, all of our diatonic chords, triads and seven chords. It even has all of our other scale formulas, our relative minor root notes, all the major scales, as I think I already said. I use this all the time in the lesson room. It's a fantastic resource, and you should get your own copy. Again, go down to the link in the description box below and download my Essential Music Theory Cheat Sheet for yourself. It is my free gift to you just for hanging out with me today. So truth number one, let's kind of dive into the nitty gritty here. Truth number one, a scale does not equal a scale shape. They are not the same thing. In the guitar playing world, we love to think of our scales as scale shapes. Now, again, when I get like intermediate players um, that know a little bit about um, music and guitar and can play um, a lot of songs and, and improvise a solo uh, with relative ease, one thing that I ask them a lot, which is also kind of an annoying question, um, but one thing that I ask them is, hey, can you just go ahead and play a major scale for me? Something that is the basic building blocks of music. And I kind of see, usually I see the um, wheels turning in their head. Usually they are great at playing major pentatonic, minor pentatonic. But if I just say full major scale, just play a regular major scale, I see the wheels turning. Okay, then I probably want that. Okay, and then if I keep going, they might, you know, try to back up and play the right notes. Or they might even play the full scale shape with relative ease, right? I see two of those things. But one thing that I think is hilarious is they always try to go for this two octave full length shape and it's always a shape. This is really different than playing, than, than say asking a piano player to play, you know, in this case in A major scale. They would just play a one octave major scale. There's a major scale. I'm using half the guitar. And that's okay. That's still a major scale. It's weird that we go to this automatic, I need to think of a scale shape. It has to be large. It has to cover all of the strings in order for it to be a major scale. You know, one thing that I almost never see is this, and it's so much easier. It's playing on the A string, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. There's no technique involved here. I'm just playing the raw notes. And that's what a scale is. A scale is fixed, a fixed group of notes. In the key of A major, it's A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp. That's what the scale is. The scale shape is a way to perform that on the instrument. Now, we as guitar players love to jump straight to the way to perform the scale on the instrument without having to learn the actual scale. It's another reason why my Essential Music Theory Cheat Sheet is so good. It lays that out for you in a very simple manner. And even the people that I say play an A major scale, and they can play it with relative ease, usually the only note that they are aware of that they are playing in that is the A, the root note. And that's not so much A, the root note, that's A, the starting note of the shape. That is issue number one and truth number one. Mastery of a scale shape does not mean mastery of 
a scale. And that really kind of sucks. That really kind of puts into perspective where we are as guitar players. This is something that Gu Guthrie Govan talks about a lot. You know, we m like to try to measure our progress on the instrument by how fast we can get through a scale. Um, but a lot of times we're actually not thinking about the scale as we are trying to get up to the fastest speed possible. And it really shouldn't be a race. I mean, I'm all for technique and working on technique, but I'm not for working on just technique without the musical application and the musical knowledge that should go along with it. Truth number two with regard to this topic, musical expression and fretboard coverage are not the same thing. Yeah, it can be great to play something that's really wide and, you know, try to use as many frets and cover as many frets as I can, but that doesn't mean that that is any more musically expressive as... something, I don't know, like that. B.B. Um, King is a great example of this because he often stayed in, you know, small areas of the neck as he would solo and extremely musically expressive, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a little bit of a bluesy solo around the ninth, 10th fret or so. Right, something like that can still be relatively expressive. I'm going along with the chords, uh, changing my note choices along with each chord. You probably heard that diminished four chord in there, sharp four diminished, I guess I should say. And then the six chord, two, five, one, five, all staying around there. We can still be musically expressive without expanding this stuff. Again, what's the answer there? Understanding the notes that you are playing, which is also the same thing as actually understanding the scale that you're playing. That's my big gripe with this is like, you know, they say, stop trying to use scales. What do you mean? The scales are literally ingredients that we can use to express ourselves musically. And again, I make the distinction that when you hear this, they're not actually talking about scales. They're talking about scale shapes and that sort of thing. But we've already been there. We've talked about that. The other truth, and this is a tough one because we like things to be as fast as possible, but the truth of the matter is, I'm going to be the only guitar player on YouTube to actually tell you this. It can be simple, but it is never going to be fast to actually obtain a level of fretboard omnipotence, as I'm going to say. Simple. I'm going to teach you simple ways to build this knowledge over time. You will not necessarily be better by the end of this video, which is another unpopular thing that people would say on YouTube. You are not going to be any better by the end of this video, but what I'm going to show you by the end of this video are the tools that you can use throughout a long period of time, and that can be relative, that can be relatively speaking, throughout a relatively long period of time to become a much better musician and know much more about the fretboard and the music that you are playing. It can be simple. Simple is good. It's never going to be fast. And that's okay. We live in a world right now where I want to be the best player, the best guitar player ever that I can be right now. I want the one YouTube video that is going to teach me how to shred amazingly in, you know, 10 or less minutes <laughs> because, you know, watching a YouTube video that is over 10 minutes long can be tough. And I get it, right? Our time is very valuable. I'm not saying that that's wrong at all. But enjoy the process, the process of actually becoming a more thoughtful and more complete minded musician on your instrument is way better through time, way better, much more enjoyable to actually grow as a musician rather than to just be given, you know, the um, uh, elusive gift of now I can, you know, be an amazing guitar player after this one 10 minute video. And also that doesn't happen. That's not the truth of it. I know a lot of people make videos to say that you can do this and they might teach you tricks and tricks are good. Tricks are fine. Tapping is a great trick. 
Um, sweeping is another good trick. You know, learning tricks, learning technique is good, but it's not going to make it. It's not going to help you free up on the fretboard and have a much more connected musical experience on your instrument. So how do we actually get there? How do we get to the point where we can build this over time? Three exercises that I want to talk to you about. These are really simple exercises, but the more that you implement these into your practice routine, the more things will start to combine and make sense. Exercise number one, play a lick everywhere on the guitar. Here's what I mean by this. I'm going to be in A major again, and I'm just going to play this simple, here's A major pentatonic, the scale shape that we all might be very familiar with. Problem with scale shapes is we're trying to learn this, this entire chunk of information and then put that entire chunk of information all over the fretboard. Let's just take a musical idea and put it all over the fretboard. So that little thing right something vaguely musical i'm i'm bending the second up to the third and i'm kind of bouncing between the root and the second and i kind of go down to the six as well so three two one six one six one two three something like that now can i play that in other areas of the guitar like if I play it, this is starting on the G string. Can I play it starting on the D string? Can I start it on the A string? Can I start it on the B string? Can I start it on the E, the e string? Can I play it in different octaves? Can I play it? So... Something that you'll notice is there's always going to be like at least five ways to play something. Here's one, two, three, four, and then five. And then all those are going to turn around again um, in the next octave. One, two, getting high up now there are three and so on and so forth the thing that i'm targeting is the starting note of my phrase not the starting note of a scale shape i'm looking for really what i'm looking for is the root note because if i know where my root note is on all of these strings then i can find the second degree and then i can bend the second degree up to the third here's my root here's the root so take a simple idea, try to play it everywhere on the fretboard, and think about the notes or the scale tones that you are playing in all of these uh, in all of these areas. It'll be the same thing, right? It's the same lick, but you are thinking, you are referencing from an area that isn't the start of a scale shape. I hope that makes sense. Now, something that goes along with a little bit more of a scale shape exercise bridge the gaps. And here's what I mean by this. I'm going to go back to the idea of A major scale. Now, I'm going to just bridge the gaps from one scale shape to the next. I can move down, I can move up. And I'm going to do this in such a way that is not a fixed exercise. I'm going to have something of a little more of a free exercise. So, bridge the gap. 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 I'm just moving. In the sequence of the scale, I'm not like always going up and down one, um, just one dedicated shape. I'm just sort of always playing the scale stepwise in whatever way and moving from shape to shape. So we can also get a little bit more structured with this by saying I'm always going to move 
um, up a scale shape from the third degree to the fourth degree, okay? So here's what I mean by that. Here's our scale shape, one, two, three, move up to four, the next scale shape, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, move up the scale shape, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, moving down scale shape, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, seven, one. I can just kind of make random patterns. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm always moving to the next scale shape going from the third degree to the fourth degree. Now, I'm not going to tab anything out for you because if you are learning to replicate a tab, you are missing the entire point of this exercise. The idea is not to teach you to replicate something on a tab. Tab is really good for that. This is not the point of the exercise. The exercise is in the mental preparation and the mental exercise of actually working through and problem solving. This is problem solving. This is musical guitar critical thinking that we are talking about here. How do I move? How do I actually move from scale shape to scale shape? How can I actually find that? And doing exercises like this helps you to make musical connections. Okay, you can choose something else. From five to six, I'm always gonna move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm always moving up on the sixth degree. You can do the same thing down, and you can be even freer with it. So that's bridge the gaps. And the third, and what I would imagine is the best, yes, the best way to do this. And no one likes to have this conversation because I've been doing videos on this for now um, probably a year and a half, always kind of mentioning this in a lot of my videos. The best method to actually improve your soloing and make musical connections, single string soloing. Now, this is not go to your gig tonight and only solo on one string, but in the practice room, try to make musical phrases by just playing one string at a time. Stay in A. Right, so that big leap that I had there, one, two, three, five, six, one, three, the thing that I'm thinking about when I am soloing or improvising or making some melodies on one string, I'm thinking about the music. There is no more scale shape to hold you back and, and, and that you have to think about as your solo ingredients. It's pure music. It's pure notes. Try to play simple melodies on one string. Um, hot cross buns. Right? Or something like, um, Mary had a little lamb. And then, I don't know, finish up an octave as well. Simple little melodies like that across one string, one, are great to teach young students. I do this all the time. It's really, it's really good. Something that I've done lately, now this is across two strings, but it's kind of the same thing. something like that. Try to implement that on one string. It's kind of hard to do in the key of E minor because we have run out of room. Learn and try to figure out very simple melodies across one string or across, you know, very few strings. One string to start for sure. But this eliminates scale shapes. Your only ingredients that you can actually sort of mentally think about are the notes and the distances between notes. Learning melodies is good because it gets you out of the habit of just playing the scale up and down. I guess that is the only shape that, you know, might possibly exist within that. So learning melodies is good.
learning melodies is really good because melodies don't just operate in a sequential order. You know, we're not just going up and down a scale shape usually, unless it's hot cross buns. So should you stop using scales to solo? Absolutely not. If you want to improve your soloing, you actually need to learn more about scales and learn more about music. Again, a great resource for this is my Essential Music Theory Cheat Sheet. You can find it linked in the description box below. Making musical connections and understanding more about music is what is going to help you improve your soloing. My name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more, and I will see you in the next video.